Greetings, my Christians, friends. It is real good to be with you again today. I'm here with the good doctor, with Dr. LeFaber. Like I said, a young man that loves the Lord. He loves the truth. He loves principles, and he loves people. Amen. So we're going to ask the Lord to bless us with giving you a message that's going to be life-changing for you. We want to look at this message as the essentiality of the soul. Uh, the essence of the soul, uh, the nature of our soul. Amen. You know, our soul is that spiritual, immaterial part of us that um, not enough attention is paid to the soul because the soul knows something that the flesh does not know. Amen. Uh, the soul of a man, and that is the, the saved soul or the sanctified soul, of the born again soul knows something that the flesh does not know. The, the soul is going to help us and assist us with our with our real needs, with our eternal needs. So let us pray. Father God, we come today, Lord, because we are, are looking for more wisdom and knowledge and understanding so we'll know how to live in this sinful, challenging world. Oh, Lord, because uh, you have provided what we need, but, but sometimes it's not so easy to find. So for that person out there, Lord, that's been seeking a better way and seeking a clearer understanding for their meaning and purpose in life, or, oh, Lord, or how we can, uh, uh, Lord, to, to look for what is going to make us a whole person, Lord? What is the essential for our well-being? So, Lord, show us in this word today exactly what we need. And we're going to give you praise and glory and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I just told you that the soul knows and understands what we really need. What we really need because if we don't understand the needs of our soul, that's the reason we can't get no satisfaction. We can't. You know, we can gain and short-term pleasures and get a thrill for a moment, but we want something that is lasting and something that will will endure. So what we really want, Dr. Faber, is peace Amen. of soul. It's, it's, it's that kind of constant peace of soul. And as you know, that, that it will elude us if we don't know how to get in touch with God and ask Him for help. And I thank God for the psalmist, for the psalmist, and for the Bible, really just for the Word of God, because the answer to everything that we need is in the Word of God. So I'm going to start out by giving you a scripture, and I want you to take it in, my friends, and use it and think about it and ponder this scripture as I did. And this is Psalms chapter 33, verse 20. Look what this song uh, tells the psalmist and what it tells us. In Psalms chapter 33, verse 20, the psalmist says, Our soul mm, oh, waits man, for the Lord. Praise God. He is our help. And our shield. Now I'm excited about that, but you really gotta look close at this text, at any text, uh, and look what the psalmist is really saying here. But you really have to dig into it and think about it. He he telling us the soul need, the soul need, but the soul knows uh, of what we really need, and we need providential care. We need help. From the God above. Now listen one more time what this psalmist says here. Psalm 33 and 20. Our soul waits for our soul. Your soul and my soul and David's soul. And everybody's soul. You might not be aware of it, but it's waiting for the Lord. You know, our soul is not like the flesh. Our soul is uh, that 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 the very essence of our nature, uh, that part of us, it, it's waiting for the truth. It's Amen. waiting for a word from the God before it's moved. Our soul waits for what? The Lord. For the Lord. It's, it's, he is waiting on our sovereign God. That is the soul on inside of us. That is a part of us that never die. It lives on. 
That's the part that, that help guides us every day in a spiritual way if we take it in. So look what he said. Our soul waits for the Lord. But you know, if we're in a too big a hurry, we don't understand this. Our soul, uh, we, 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 we just won't wait. You know, it's, it's not waiting. We're just moving too fast. We're not even aware of that. Come on. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Look at that. He is our help. He is our help, friend. He is our provision. Uh, uh, he supplies our need. Our soul will show us how to get the help and the real needs, get our the real help, the thing that we really need to become the best version of ourselves. Amen. It, 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 the soul uh, awaits for that, and, and, and it will show us how to do it, and not only that, but look at this, my friend, the soul, that, that very essence of our nature, it knows how to find shelter in a storm. Amen. It knows how to find shelter for the stormy winds and for the rains and for the tough times in life. You know, when you look at this way, you know what it is, the this, this soul, uh, from this perspective, is, is a hiding place. Amen. And we all need a hiding place. We all need somewhere we can just steal away and, and just, you know, just be in connection with God. So our soul, because he is our help and he is our shield. Our shield is a protection. He is our security. He is our protection. He is our strength. It is right there in the soul, but we got to find it. You got to find your help and you got to find your shield. You got to find it. Now, I have another song for you. And you know what? I look at this as being the gospel in a nutshell, my friends. The gospel in a nutshell. Look at this. If you can just get these few words, then you'll find strength. You'll find help. You'll find strength for the journey of life. And your soul, our soul, will be satisfied. Come on. Let's see what the psalmist say in Psalm 27. Psalm 27, verse 1 and 2. The scripture says from the New King James Version, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light, my light. Now what, what that tells me, a, a light illuminates things. It means that God is going to be my guidance. He's going to show me the path. He's going to show me the real path I need because my soul will speak to me and say, Look, I need to listen to God. Amen. Come on. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He is Whom my salvation. shall I fear? Yeah, look at that. He is my deliverance. And he is a great deliverer. He is a strong deliverer. Nobody can fall down too far or get too low that he can't pick us up. Go ahead. The Lord is the strength, of, the my strength of my life. my life. When I'm weak, I'm yet strong. If I listen to my soul needs, if I can do it. Can you do it? Let's learn from this sermon today. Just how to listen to the need of the soul. Go ahead. Now. The Lord is the strength of my life. Yes, he of is. whom shall I be afraid? Yes, he is. You know how fear will overtake us. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, a lot of people don't realize this. But God did not give us a spirit of fear. But I thought about it. It does not mean we don't have fear. Amen. It just says God has not given us the spirit of fear. It comes from some other place. But fear is there. It, it is a part of life. But God gives us, he helps us to deal with whatever we are faced with. When the wicked came See, against me to eat up my flesh. And the flesh, wicked is going to come, children. Wicked devices is going to come your way. They come every day. They come to your mind. They come to your spirit. They come to your flesh. They got to come. Come on, because they're there. To eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and failed. In the face of what I've learned, what, my, what the essence of my nature Deep down in my soul, when I waited, when my soul waited for the Lord till I got a word, then he shows me how to deal with everything. Dr. Favor, I know you have a good word for us today and for the good people out there. And I'm excited about it because there is deliverance in your word today. And I know that there's inspiration in it. And I know that there is wisdom and knowledge in the word you have for us today. So come on and preach to us. Thank you, Pastor, for inspiring us with your Praise opening uh, verses to encourage us. I love what you said that we, the need of the soul mm. is that we need peace. My God. And today we want to deal with the theme, the cry of the soul. The cry of the soul. 
the cry of the soul as we were preparing for this message in prayer pastor mentioned that if if he if god touches your soul you will want him to touch oh, you yes. again yes. and many times we really don't understand the deep needs of the soul but Preach. through this message today we want to help you understand what your soul really needs mm. and the day we discover that our lives change and take on new meaning i love what david said as we will unpack this verse during our sermon today david said in psalm 42 he says as the heart or as the deer panted meaning desireth after the water brooks mm. Preach. so panted my soul Praise after God. thee you, O god so David is giving us a symbol of a very thirsty yeah, deer yeah. that is hey. very dehydrated. And when he finally finds a nice, cool drink of water, he just immerses himself in that water. And David is picturing his soul as being thirsty for God. And perhaps you're watching Preach us this. today and you're very thirsty. His next verse says, my soul thirsts for God. Mm -hmm. For the living God. See, God is not dead. He's alive. David say, my soul thirsts for the living God. When? Praise God. When shall I come and appear before God? Do you know David is asking this question? God, my soul is thirsty. When can I come to you? Perhaps you've been waiting today and God is inviting you into his presence. Come to me, child, so I can take care of the needs of your soul. We all have them, but like David, you have to ask God, God, when can I come into your presence? And God is available you, right Jesus. now for you to come into his presence and get the needs of your soul met. Hallelujah, hallelujah, doctor, as you're preaching that. It makes me think about it. I don't know about you. I have to speak for myself. My soul needs something more than just physical food. My soul needs something more than just a nice car. My soul needs something more just than nice clothes. My soul needs something more even than money in the bank. These things are not to have, but they still are not going to quench this, stirp, this soul thirst. You know it. You know it and I know it. Because every time that we find something that we think is going to satisfy us, then we find that same old thirst, that, that thirst in soul. But the preacher is preaching about the day, the real need of the soul. Thank you, Pastor. See, as Pastor unpacked and expounded, there's nothing external or Amen. material that can meet the needs of the soul. Praise and today our theme is the cry of the soul. You may say, well, what do you mean by the cry mm -hmm. of the soul? The cry of the soul is... Explain it. Explain it. Come on. All it's the depth of the emotion Explain this, yeah. we feel, Explain whether it. positive or or negative. See, every emotion we feel, it reflects our relationship with God. Oh, yes. See, notice what the psalmist said in Psalm 34, verse 6. Look what he said from the New Revised Standard. This poor soul, oh, this poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. Now, what's the meaning of this verse? In this text, David cries out to God. He refers to his soul as poor. Now, we know David wasn't financially poor, but he's saying, listen, my soul is poor. Why? The meaning of poor in this context suggests humility and one's dependence on God. David said, until you, my Lord. soul is satisfied, you, until my dependence on God is stronger and deeper, I'm a poor man. Perhaps today, our soul is thirsty for God because we have not gone deep enough and dependent on God for our needs, Pastor. Praise God, it took me a long time. I was seeking and searching through many things, trying to find some satisfaction, and I couldn't get none. But I'm so glad now. I know where to get the needs of my soul met. You know where it is? I find this, my soul needs in prayer, Amen. in prayer, in meditation, uh, in uh, coming together with a few other spiritual saved and sanctified people. I, you know, I find my needs, my soul needs, in on prayer line, in the prayer group, in a good Bible study, in a good worship service, in good gospel preaching, then I get some soul satisfaction. Praise God. 
We, no we, we all, Pastor, <laughs> we want souls to this fashion. Do you know from the beginning, God always desired to meet our soul yeah, needs? Yeah. Look at Genesis 2 and 7. It says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living you, soul. The soul denotes the breath. The breath of life. And then Genesis 2 and 7, God breathed life into man and he became a living soul. You, you know the soul, as Pastor mentioned, is the invisible part of man. It is the immaterial part mm. of mm -hmm. us. So David, he said, my soul, my immaterial part is longing for God. In Psalm 63 and 1, Pastor David a psalm of David when he was in the wilderness mm -hmm. of Judah, yes, Lord. he said, oh, oh God, God thou mercy. art my God, my early God. will I seek thee. My soul, you, he said, my soul thirsts for thee, my soul longeth for thee in a dry my and thirsty God. land. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No water hallelujah, is. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The longing of the soul. You know what? My soul was longing for something for a long time, as I'm sure your soul, and it may be still longing for something, but I'm glad that God found me, uh, I found God, because I could not get any satisfaction. And I tell you what, because the devil was putting a lot of pressure on me, and my flesh was putting a lot of pressure on me, and my socialization, the way I was socialized in the world, my peers and all these things, listen, church, it was putting pressure on me, pressure Amen. on me. But then, when I began to wait on the Lord, to wait uh, for him, for my soul need. Then I find some help. Come on, preacher. See, we human beings, we have a soul. Yep. And that soul can never be satisfied <laughs> without trusting in Jesus yes, Christ yes, Lord. as Lord and Savior. See, the analogy of the Bible, Thank water you, explains the life Thank giving. You, it's the vitality of the gospel. See, when we get the gospel in our hearts and in our lives, it transforms us. Notice what Psalm 18 and 6 says. He said, in my distress. See, the soul, as Pastor mentioned, mm -hmm. we go through distress. We go through we hard do. times. Part of being but here. perhaps you're watching today and your soul is down and in distress. Or perhaps you're unsatisfied. But look what David said. In my distress, he said, in my emotional pain, in my hardships, in my struggle, I called upon the Lord. Have you ever fell on your face and called out to God in distress? He said, upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. See, we don't really know how much help we need. Perhaps you've never been stuck in life. I know I've been there, but there comes a time when all you have is your relationship with God. He said, from the temple, he heard me. Praise God. Hallelujah. He heard my voice and my cry. It reached his ears. Pastor, his Hallelujah. cry reached God's ears. I told you that's the way we find it. That's where we find the need of us. Our soul is through prayer. And we all bend down. And if the truth be told, nothing, nothing outside of God has never been able to bring us if any lasting satisfaction. So I need our soul. Um, have a need. There's no doubt about it. Come on. The psalmist says in Psalm 145, 18, the Lord this. is not unto all them Praise God. that I call upon him. Lord, him. To help. all that call help upon us, him help us. in truth. Help Do you know us, God? Jesus. He's longing for Thank us you, to call upon Thank him you, in Jesus. truth so he can meet the needs of our soul. So today if you're Thank watching you. And you feel unsatisfied. You feel incomplete. You feel that you're lacking something. Cry out to God as we have done. And he'll meet the need of your soul. And you'll be satisfied. Final instructions from our pastor. Oh, Lord have mercy. I'm urging you, brothers and sisters. I'm begging you. I'm beseeching you. Let us call out to the Lord with everything that's within us. Now, I tell you, that if the truth is, you know, I, I, I don't know if you have just ever tarried before the Lord, Amen. just stayed with him a while, 
and you and seek the Lord from the bottom of your soul, not because he is hard of hearing, but sometimes these things that hold us back, they're so deeply ingrained until we just need to cry to God with everything and be like Jacob. Don't let go until you know the Lord has blessed you and brought about deliverance. He'll do it. He will do it. But we have to call out to him. It's like he's talking in his message. I'm excited. We got to cry to the Lord and call on him in Jesus' name. And ask him for help. Do it to something for the soul. Ask him for something for the soul. I got something for my flesh. But God, do you have something for your, my soul? And, and you know he got something for your soul. Thank you, preacher. Thank you, pastor, for those final instructions. You know what God has for your soul? Mm -hmm. He has peace. <laughs> That surpasses all yes. understanding. Listen, your soul is waiting for the Lord. It Lord. It's yep. not waiting for something yep, material. It's not that. waiting your for another relationship. For it's not waiting your for another job, for, for another car. Oh, your soul God. is waiting for God. It's waiting for God. Your soul is. Yeah. And when he comes in, a, yeah. he'll change it. It's not another date. It's not another relationship. With anything, our soul is still waiting. And some people have been waiting all of their lives, whether you're young or old, little boy or little girl, old person, your soul need your, your, it's God. You need your God. Thank you so much. So today, as your soul is thirsting, as you watch us today, do what we all have done with a thirsty soul. Praise we God. allow Christ to meet the needs of our soul. How? Through receiving him as Lord and Savior. The first step in this process is mm -hmm. say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for me and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior and belong to him and give your soul back to your creator who breathed the breath of life you, into you. God has a purpose Hallelujah. and plan for you Hallelujah. today and he wants you to be who he created you to be. All of our subscribers, thank you for giving us comments and telling us how these messages are blessing you weekly. It encourages us to continue to bring you messages. It's a blessing to work alongside the pastor and bring you, you messages on a weekly basis. Amen. Well, God loves you, and, and so do I. May he continue to bless you and keep and make his face to shine upon you. Yes. Until next time, and remember... Find a good Bible teaching church where you may grow and reach your full potential wherever you are. God bless you.